Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you. Thank you for joining me once again for another spirit review video. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Kavalon line of cast strength single malt whiskeys from Taiwan. That's right, they were not talking about single malts from Scotland. We're talking about Taiwanese single malts. And that's simply because, again, remember, single malt just simply means single distilleries can happen from anywhere, any part of the world. All right. Now, the Kavalon name actually comes from the King Car Distillery there in Taiwan. And they have been actually been producing whiskey there since roughly around 2005. But it wasn't until 2009 when they actually got the um, designator as a whiskey producing region there in Taiwan that they really started coming on strong. Now, that's 2009. Fast forward 2011. They actually produced some of their whiskey to compete in a blind taste test against some Scottish whiskeys, and it won. So in 2011, people started taking a little bit of recognition. Follow that to 2013, in between there, it's winning multiple awards. We're talking hundreds of gold medals. Uh, I think the Vino Barique was named World Whiskey of the Year. Uh, they've, been, they've all won several awards, okay? So they've been very, very highly decorated whiskeys. Now, the other thing to note about Kavalon that was pretty amazing to me and everyone else, which was the age of these whiskeys. These are young whiskeys. This is five-year-old whiskeys. At the oldest, it's seven years old. That's the oldest Kavalon I've ever seen is this Fino, and at seven years of age. So how they're getting five-year-old whiskeys to have viscosities like this and uh, flavor complexities like this is pretty phenomenal, but it happens to go with the subtropical climate of Taiwan. That meaning, it, we're talking really, really warm days by cool nights, so you're getting uh, this heavy breathing action in the barrels, so the whiskey's maturing very, very fast. Now, you compare that to like Kentucky, where our bourbons, you know, they, they mature fairly fast at 10 years of age, maybe 15 is the prime, somewhere in there, and it's an anomaly to find 23 year old and older bourbons that haven't become overwooded or uh, totally evaporated in the barrel. It's kind of similar in Taiwan, except their prime is apparently five to seven years old. Um, the other thing to note is that they're very picky about their cast selection. For the ex-bourbon barrels, they're very careful. You're getting crazy flavors out of those barrels. The Vino Barique, which is aged in Portuguese red and white, uh, white wine barrels that are scraped, recharred on the inside before having their whiskey put in it. And then the Oloroso Sherry Cask uh, version. And finally, the little bit drier Fino Sherry. So they've done phenomenal jobs. Now, when you go to the store, you're going to see these in tubes. Uh, the Kavalon X Bourbon comes in a nice green tube. There it is. Little gold plate at the bottom telling you it's 57.1%. The X, uh, the Vino Buddy comes in a little blue tube like that. Uh, the Sherry Cask actually comes in a little red tube like this. Again, 58.6 at the bottom. And finally, their most expensive whiskey is the Fino Sherry. Comes in a nice wooden block, uh, box, nice little display case. Now, what I would like for you to do when you go to stores is make sure you open them up because there may be, let's say there's just two of these sitting on the shelf, just open them up, take a look at the label on the bottle because the label will tell you a lot about the whiskey that's inside it. So, for example, Sherry Cast Kavalon. We look at the cast number, it gives you right here on the top, uh, S08120524. Seems like a bunch of numbers, but let's break it down. S being sherry, uh, 08, that's the year it was distilled. Uh, so 2008, 12, that's the month, December. Uh, next is 05, the fifth day of December. So in the last three digits, 024, the last three digits are just the barrel uh, that was barreled that day. So this is the 24th barrel, barreled on the 5th of December back in 2008. You flip the bottle around and on the back label it has a little dot matrix code. This tells you the day it was bottled. So this was 3-21-2014. So March 21st, 2014 is when it was bottled at 15-34, p.m. Alright, so you do a little math and you come to figure out the age. Five years old, some months. Alright, that's what all these are. Other thing to note, price points. Oh, well, well before I get there. The whole reason I tell you that is because I've had the 08, which this is, look at it, almost gone. 
and I've actually compared it to an 06, S06. And me personally, I prefer the S06 because it's not such a sherry bomb. The S06 was more um, sherry, and but then you could still get the barley, you could still get the cocoa powder coming on. It was more complex without being as overly sherry as the 08. Now that being said, if you've never had either, you're gonna love the 08 because my friends kill this bottle. Look at it, that's not me. That's me sharing this with other people and they love it. So <laughs> what happens is, if you never had the 06, the 08's gonna be phenomenal. And until you have the 06 and you're gonna be like, oh, maybe, if, but if, I take that back because if you love sherry whiskeys, you're gonna love the sherry bomb, the big sherryness of the 08, maybe more than the 06. Me personally, I find the 06 a little more complex, a little more balanced to where is. this is just leaning really heavy on the sherry. Okay, enough said about that. All right, let's go ahead and get to the actual nosing. The Kavalon X Bourbon Barrel, 57.1% on the nose. Wow. Vanilla custard, honey, barley. Yeah, it's still getting that fresh barley. Some orchard fruits on the nose initially. It's maybe apricots and then a lot of guava, a lot of pineapple and maybe mango as well. And then you get tobacco leaf on the back end, cinnamon, a little clove as well. And that's pretty much what I find in that whiskey. It's pretty complex, really, really sweet vanilla um, and fruity, especially with those tropical fruits. All right, Vino Barique, Portuguese wine barrels. Maybe that's why this uh, starts with a W. Maybe it's for the, the Portuguese wine. All right, so. Wow. Okay, so we're leaning more on this one, more on caramel, more on molasses. So when I first initially smell it, if you didn't know any better, you could almost, if I told you you were smelling an ultra premium rum, you would believe me because you're getting caramel and molasses on the nose. It's very, very deep, very rich. Red fruits are in here. Um, red fruits being um, raspberries, some strawberries, but maybe they're stewed. And then figs, plums, raisins. bananas there's almost like a fruitcake element here maybe that's a better way of saying it. it's like a lot of fruitcake notes some toasted almonds cocoa powder orange peel dried orange peel so maybe like um mulling spices cinnamon clove Maybe even a little nutmeg on that one with those dried orange peels. A little cocoa powder on the back end. I wasn't getting the tobacco leaf that I was finding here, but we'll see on the flavor profile. Next up, the Sherry Cast Kavalon. Yep, that's, that's rich sherry. Figs, prunes, uh, plums, raisins, cinnamon, cardamom, clove, the cardamom being the unique spice here. Okay, on the back end, maybe like a little bit of coffee uh, fudge to this one. Not necessarily cocoa powder, more a little bit sweeter fudge, thicker, richer. Cinnamon's a little bit more, it's a little more dominant here. A little sp spicier cinnamon on the nose than this one that everybody else all right, Fino Sherry. Oof, that's a beauty. The crazy thing about the Fino Sherry is the amount of spices and different spices on the nose. While it still smells, it's not too sweet. It's, um, but it's not too heavily molasses like this one. This one's almost a perfect balance of the X Bourbon. The, it's almost a perfect balance of all three because you're getting the Sherry notes but there's just a ton of spices. So if you're ever in a spice market and you just smell that, that 
orchestra of spices. That's kind of what you get here on the nose. It's so hard to pick out the individual players. The ones I can pick out are, would be cinnamon, clove, nutmeg, almost just allspice. It has the mulling spices that I found here with the dried orange peels as well. A hint of that cardamom. And then you've got the, the little bit of coffee bean, the little bit of the, the fruit cake element that I was finding here is also in here, but just with so much spices on top. Cocoa powder on the back end. Yeah, those orange peels are in there. Really, really nice. All right, let's go ahead and get to the tasting. Kavalon X bourbon barrel. That's ridiculous. It's ridiculous because it's five years old. Okay. When it enters, doesn't enter too hot. None of these really need water. You can add water if you want. It may bring out some more flavors, but man, they're so... I don't want to take away from the oiliness of them. So this one at 57.1% is, I would say, at about a 65% viscosity. So 50 being a nice medium viscosity. It's a little over that. It's not super oily, but it's got a lot of oils. Um, when you taste it, the first thing I got was the, the orchard fruit. So like that the apricot, almost like an apricot jam. And then you got the honey and the barley coming in. And then followed that up. And I can say that because I'm still tasting each and every one of these. Let me try it again. Vanilla custard, almost like, again, angel food cake on this one. And then it, uh, and then the cinnamon and a little bit of clove come in that apricot jam, and then all of a sudden a ton of tropical fruits fall on your head just before the mid palate. So a lot of guava, a little bit of mango, a little bit of papaya, a little bit of actually, a little more of the underripe pineapples, what I would describe that as. A little bit of banana in there as well. Coconut in there. And then you get past that and you're starting to chew on uh, uh, oak, sweet oak, barrel char, um, so like caramelized sugars, tobacco leaves, maybe even coffee bean on the back end of that one. Very complex. So while it doesn't look like much and you're thinking it's just the X bourbon barrel, it's not anything, man. This thing is dropping flavors. It's ridiculous. All right, vino barrique. Smells like an ultra premium rum. And then you taste it. And you could almost think it's a cast strength ultra premium rum because that molasses, that sweet caramel richness comes through. You, you do get the mulling spices, the cinnamon, um, clove, maybe a sprinkling of nutmeg. So almost all spice, but a lot of orange, dried orange peels in here. Fruit cake, just like I was nosing, is coming through on the palate. old leather on this one I'm trying to look for the co I'm not getting tobacco but I am getting cocoa powder on the back end chocolate almost but cocoa powder a little bit of that coffee bean coming through as well on the vino buddy but it just ties in so nicely with those other rich heavy flavors beautiful whiskey that's why that's been winning a lot of awards I almost think every time I taste these, I think it's the vino barrique is almost the balance between these two. Not really so much tropical fruits, but the, the vanilla sweetness and the um, angel food cake and the leather that you, uh, not leather, the tobacco that you're getting here mixed with the sherry nuts that you're about to hear about here on this one. So the sherry cask. Oof. Again, this is going to be big. 58.6%. Perfect mouthfeel. Wow, that's rich. So this was like 65% viscosity. This one's probably 65, 65, 70% viscosity. This one feels 70%. It's very, very viscous because of that rich sherry. 
dates, figs, plums, a little bit of raisin, not too much raisin, cinnamon, clove, that cardamom that you got on the nose is on the palate. That's the beauty of all these whiskeys. Pretty much they follow the nose. That plum still pulling on through that sherry note. Cinnamon is a little spicier, but not bad. Um, cinnamon, clove, a little bit of dried orange peels in this one as well. A little bit of that coffee bean element coming through on this one on the flavor profile, but it is in the back end. Not nearly as much uh, tobacco leaf. That's one thing that's not quite as noticeable. It's more coffee bean here on the sherry cask. Wonderful whiskey though, especially at 58.6%. You'd never know it. That's a beautiful, beautiful Oloroso matured whiskey. All right, Cavallon Fino. Oh, nose, those spices. Wow, yeah. And just like the others, it follows straight on through. So, on that one I get like a perfect balance of caramel, molasses, but it doesn't feel like a rum. Like this one is kind of like an ultra premium rum because it was leaning a little more on the molasses uh, than the caramel or the vanilla and the malt like this one was doing, the honey. And it's definitely not as richly sherried as this one. But this one is like the perfect balance of all three. Uh, you're getting that fruit cake, those uh, multiple spices, the, the mulling spices that you were getting here with almost like a, a Grand Marnier where you're getting a cognac and rum uh, with the molasses influence here. The sherried fruits are still there. The figs, maybe the figs and plums, not really raisins here. I don't get any tropical fruits. That's the one thing that would be just way over the top if that had tropical fruits. But I don't get the guava, the pineapple. Maybe a little banana though. You know what? I would say banana and maybe a little bit of mango in this one. But then there you got the cocoa powder and all those exotic spices. So again, spice market and it's just full of spices it comes through on the palate not hot cocoa powder coffee beans here on the finish old leather on the finish the finish on each and every one of these will probably last you a good five minutes easily uh, they're phenomenal whiskeys with tremendously long finishes my personal favorite for the money is probably going to be the vino barique Second favorite, and I mean they're close, is the X bourbon barrel. Um, then the sherry. I don't know. Uh, then the, maybe the, the fino because of the price. And then maybe the sherry. These two are interchangeable. If, if the money is not an issue, I'd probably lean towards the fino. But again, this is pretty high dollar. Uh, so if you're out there and you can afford it, hey, any of these are great if you can afford it. This is really, really great with the spices that are going to blow you away. So anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I will put the cast numbers of each and every one of these bottles in the comments. So you, if you see them, you know exactly what they're gonna taste like, hopefully. And everybody have a great evening and cheers.